Good morning. I'm Father Rob Slocum, priest in partnership with Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And we're here to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. And because of the pandemic, we're in the backyard here at my home with my wife, Victoria, who will be assisting me with our liturgy. I also want to thank Sally Razor for helping us by preparing the bulletins that we're going to be using. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. Hallelujah. We'll say together, Christ our Passover. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ our, our Passover has, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast, the feast not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. And now we'll say Psalm 31, uh, verses 1 to 5 and 15 to 16. We'll say the psalm by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we will say together, Canticle 8. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The, the horse, horse and his rider has he hurled into, into the sea. sea. The, the Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior, Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? 
who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. With your might you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we will now say Canticle 19. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great, great deeds are they that, that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now we have a reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now we'll say together Canticle 20. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, by way of homily, I want to recall, first of all, the, the opening of the, the gospel passage that we have for today, where Jesus says to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus says. And that is timeless advice, not just for the disciples, but for each of us today. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Believe in God, believe also in Jesus, he says to us, believe in me. And so in this way, we are reminded to have confidence, to have faith, to have strength. I have to tell you, when I was in college, I took a class and there was an English professor who specialized in poetry and he had published uh, a poem and I believe a book with the title, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled, but he changed the word to H-A-R-T, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. And in a way, I think that draws out the meaning of this gospel passage in an incredible and important way. If you think, I mean, a heart is like a deer. You will think like wild as big deer, a deer that goes bounding through the forest, it jumps over the stream that is alive and fresh and moving, uh, full of energy, full of hope, moving forward. And so the heart in all of us, the H-A-R-T, that has joy, that has energy, that abounds in eagerness, in love, in willingness to move forward. That heart uh, that's in each of us it can be troubled, can be disturbed. Certainly, we can find our current situation disturbing. You know, weeks, months of pandemic, limitations, fear, um, threat of, 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 of death, of ailments of all kinds of problems and yet in the face of that we are, are people of faith people of love people who know our lord with us let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid believe in god believe also in our lord believe in jesus and believe also in the community of jesus that we are as, as we read elsewhere in scripture the church is the body of Christ in the world, and we're individually members of it. We are commissioned, we are sent to share God's love in the world, to make his assurances known for us, to be available to others, to reflect the light of his light, to reflect the love of his love so that we may be able to, to know it and to share it more fully. Sometimes, if we want to do that, that may involve actually letting go of things that get in the way, that hold us back. Once I heard it said that uh, these obstacles in our lives that perhaps we create are like stones that we carry on our backs and weigh us down, hold us back. It's sort of like carrying really heavy luggage through an airport. You can hardly move with it. And so I can ask in that way, what are the stones that may be in your life? Uh, uh, grudges, anger, fear, distractions, things that get in the way, things that keep us from being our own best selves. And so if we want to be able to spring like a heart over streams and rocks, we need to be 
agile. We need to be nimble. We need to be ready to move. We need to be unencumbered by those things that are not our best selves, those things, anger, resentment, fear, grudges. We need to let them go. We need to put them down. I find sometimes when people act out of those negative kinds of emotions, it's because their trust has been hurt. They've been disappointed in ways. They expect if they open up, they'll be hurt again. And love does come with risks. Love puts us in vulnerable places. When you love someone, you make it more possible to be hurt. But love is worth the risk. It's worth the cost. It's worth whatever it takes to make God's love known and to know it with each other and to share that with each other. So again, I repeat the refrain, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Don't hold back from being your best self because of fear or anger or distraction. That we're commissioned to go into the world in love. It was said of the early Christians by people who didn't understand the full doctrine or the system of belief or familiar with all the rituals, but they said, see how they love one another just knowing the Christian community, see how they love one another, and maybe by extension, see how they love others, see how they welcome others, see how they serve others in need. And that's our calling. That's our calling as, as human beings, I would even say, but certainly as Christians, as children of God, as those who celebrate this Easter season of 50 days, especially filling our hearts and mouths with hallelujahs is great and wonderful and what we should do, but we also translate that into action. We translate that into the way God's love may be known through us. But for God's love to be made known through us, we don't want to have our hearts troubled. We don't want to hold back from fear of criticism or fear of being hurt. Don't let the detractors get you down. Don't let others get in the way of your own best self. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Believe in God, believe in Jesus, believe in the community we share, and know that God will be there for us and with us in the future that he invites us into each year. So our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen suffrage a 
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us our wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service will continue with Form 3, uh, Prayers of the People, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people we pray for all bishops priests and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress give to the departed eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom let us pray for our own needs and those of others i ask your prayers for those gone before us bread a wicked Julie Barnard and Dr. John Rawlings. We celebrate the birthdays of Dina Amberge, Norm Peck, Griffin Smallwood, Becky Priest, and Brandon Wright. I ask your prayers for those on our parish intercessory list Betty, Chuck, Jim, Norm, Mabel, Virginia, Ryan, Pat, DeFord, Faye, Cindy, Suzanne, Patty Sue, Tanya. Bonnie, Michael, Kenny, Judy, Shirley, Dwight, Gail, Candy, Kathy, Susanna, Lee, Mike, Heather, Teresa, Thelma, Walker, Gina, Corbin, Jessica, Patrick, Dana, Lisa, Robin, Bill and Brenda, Josh, Anna, Christy, Lance, Ron, Steve, Danny, Beverly, Luke, Abby, Cynthia, Brenda, Diane, Pete, Jeff, Debbie, Anthony, James, Barbara, Dawn, Kathy, Lucas, Clark, and Sebastian, as well as all those who suffer. We also remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad, and we also remember especially, we, we remember especially those who uh, serve as first responders, um, police, firemen, uh, emergency medical technicians, uh, others who may be on the front lines of keeping our society going, uh, store clerks, everyone working with the public in society in these days of threat due to the pandemic. I ask your prayers for those on our Dyson intercessory prayer list, the Church of the Ascension Mount Sterling, <laughs> Your priesthood partnership uh, as well. I'm glad to see that there. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all, all mercies, mercies, we, your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, to us and to and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And let me remind we'll have live Zoom coffee hour at 11. Hope to see you there.